Okay, then last part is nonlinear minimization problems. Um, so now you want to formulate your problem uh, as a minimization problem. So you have a functional uh, like like this guy. So this leads to um, you have a essentially um, u to the four here. Um, this would be equivalent to solving this nonlinear PDE by taking the corresponding derivative, setting it to zero. Uh, however, we want to kind of formulate this now and just solve directly as the minimization problem as it as it is in the first place. Okay, and also want to um, apply. Okay, so standard geometry, unit square. Something's wrong with my setup. Um, so now what you can do is um, variation, I guess. Um, so you can do several things now. You can define just this, this form that you want to uh, minimize. Uh, and then you can call, you can put this into your bilinear form. And you can ask the bilinear form to do, to do several things. First of all, you can ask to evaluate that cost functional, so or the energy here. Then you want to apply. So the what is the apply is essentially the, the derivative of that cost functional with respect to your, your state u. So that, that gives you a, a linear form um, that you get by uh, calling the, the apply function to that bilinear form then. Or you can also obtain um, the second derivative, which corresponds to the assemble linearization in your in ng solve. So here you can write down variation. So this is the problem now uh, put in very uh, symbolically into your um, bilinear form. Um, okay, and this essentially is equivalent to putting the corresponding uh, PDE problem, which is written down here as a nonlinear example, but we do it this way here. Okay, and now we can do Newton uh, iteration for the minimiza minimization problem, which takes essentially the same uh, version as before, uh, with a corresponding different interpretation of what is what is the uh, what is the a guy here. So this is again the, the implementation of that. So we see that without actually uh, having different, um, without having defined, or now we take the variation which re replaces our nonlinear definition, definition, we can just mm, implicitly uh, deal with that as a corresponding uh, uh, guy from the linear version. So we have the apply, we have the assemble linearization, and we can do the Newton iteration again. Okay, so we can solve the previous problem with the nonlinear Newton um, guy. Okay, with a few iterations. We can also evaluate the energy um, after each step to see if it really decreases. Okay. And again, I think probably also due to Michael, it, there's also a, a version shipped with ng-solve, so you can do solve the same problem now just with ng-solve and you get a converging scheme. Okay, so um, because we are close to the end, let's take a look at a few nice examples. For example, non-elasticity. So here, the, uh, the the energy is, is not that uh, trivial anymore. So we have um, this guy here, de depending on your deformation. Um, so v is the deformation, d is uh, then the, the gradient of the deformation, and corresponding to that, you get corresponding uh, stresses that you can put in some model. Here we have a nonlinear uh, model for that that we can just uh, put into and just solve. So we define a geometry. This time it's not the unit square. Uh, you might be surprised. Um, this is just a rectangle this time. Um, and OK, so we fix the boundary conditions. Um, we'll see this later on. On the left side, and we will apply some load uh, um, uh, in the volume. OK, so we redefine some, some coefficients. And the forces, as I said, so this is not that fancy. So this is now the, the part where things get a little bit more complicated, to write down at least. Um, 
So we define now the energy, this variation, and we put in that complicated expression that you see here, which involves the different terms. So what do we have here? So we have the identity matrix. Okay, this is easy to understand. We have the deriv, or you could take the grad, uh, actually. So this would defines our, our F matrix. We have the F times F transpose as a C. Okay, and the neo hookian model that we have here now depends on this C. You can easily imagine that now the ev evaluation tree of that coefficient is very complicated and involved, so it makes sense to call the compile here to, uh, to simplify the expression that we get here. Okay, and then the, the loading comes from, from the force that we have uh, in the expression here. Yeah, so the expressions are complicated, but uh, to, to, uh, if the model is clear to you, it's simple to, to uh, write it down in MG solve. Okay, so then we can solve that problem. So let's take a look, look at what is happening here. So we solve actually a series of these nonlinear problems by increasing the load step by step. So we don't apply the full load at once because then it might be difficult or impossible to, uh, for the uh, Newton scheme to converge. Instead, we, we do this here in a loop over 50 sub-steps. Um, okay, so let's take a look. So this is what you see. You have a few Newton iterations for every load, and then you increase the load step by step and end up with this hanging bar. Okay, another example is uh, an Kahn equation um, that I would actually skip if that's okay. Or should I still do it? Yeah, we are over time. So, so yeah, more importantly, do you have questions? Perhaps if you have questions, then we could perhaps address those. No? Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean... Okay, so what we do, we, we again have a, an energy. Uh, now it's um, coming from a phase separation uh, modeling. Uh, so you want to have uh, a function which is um, essentially zero, uh, essentially constant. Uh, it should take the, the values one or minus one. So the energy um, penalizes gradients. So that leads to essentially being constant and it penalizes to being uh, away from zero or one. Yeah, so that's what you have here. Okay. Uh, yeah, then we do the gradient flow of this, so an L2 gradient flow, so that means uh, we have an unstated problem from, from some, uh, the variable V uh, describes the uh, mixture of certain faces, and uh, this kind of demixing of those uh, guys uh, corresponds to the minimization of the energy of that, of that uh, process. Somehow, okay. Don't click on formulas. Um, okay, the discretization is just a simple time stepping for this implicit order again, where every part of the implicit order gap uh, is again a nonlinear minimization problem. So this is what you see here. So in every time step, we want to minimize uh, this energy where we have additionally this penalty on kind of on the... Um, Inertia, if you want. Okay, so um, we put this all into this one large code block. Um, you have the terms that we just wrote down before. Um, and uh, yes. Um, uh, and the deformation is from the last part and not really meaningful, so let's make those. Okay, so now this is more meaningful. So we have this is initial uh, value of this uh, of the solution. Uh, so it's a certain it describes a certain mixture between one and minus one, and some smooth transition between that. And now this uh, Alan Kahn uh, model describes the phase separation and should lead to the fact that we have values uh, minus one and one. Uh, and the transition between those values, minus one and one, should be relatively sharp, depending on the parameter that we have in the in energy functional. Okay, and then we do this now for 50 time steps again. 
uh, and solving in each time step this nonlinear minimization problem. And what you get is, yeah, is this. Yeah, so the function takes values which are approximately one or minus one in this plateau region, and you have a steep gradient uh, in between. Ah, and there's one last thing that I just, which is not on your tutorials, but which was on Jay's um, part, which I briefly at least want to try to explain again. So the question was for the BDDC, how to get this picture with the connected dots, uh, the vertex, the, the high order function which are connected at the vertices, but discontinuous otherwise. And there you have the postscript uh, block, so you can take a look at the unit two, one, three at the end, so you all have this there already. And I briefly want to explain how this is related to uh, the nonlinear minimization problem, um, which Joachim obviously uh, formulated here. So we have the space U, uh, space uh, VHO disk, so higher order discontinuous. We have a low order space V low order continuous, and we have a space V low order discontinuous. Um, this is what, uh, what we do in this block here, so we just create those spaces. And the purpose of the space is the following. What we want to do is uh, we want to solve the following nonlinear minimization problem. So, oh, sorry, this should be, of course, uh, norm squared. Um, nah, sure. Okay, doesn't really matter. Um, okay, and the right-hand side of the problem is, is a one, so this is essentially corresponding to this. So you want to minimize that. Uh, let's take a look at the first part. You want to minimize this. This corresponds to solving the following PDE here, so just a Poisson problem with the right-hand side one. But we also add the Lagrange multiplier here, which says that u minus the low-order function uh, should be zero with respect to this test space lambda. Okay, and this is what we, what we have now in the formulation, and this is evaluated at all the vertices. So what we're essentially saying here is that at every, at every element, at every vertex of every element, we want to have that the high order function and the low order function co coincide. Uh, so these are exactly the, the lambda space has one degree of freedom per vertex per element. Okay, and this is what we can constrain now with, with that. Uh, and this is now written in this one nonlinear minimization problem here. So we have the, the evaluation of all the vertices of all elements. This is written down here in this dx and then element vb, b boundary. Yeah, so this gives us the, the vertex evaluations of the Lagrange multiplier lambda and the u high order and the u low order. And apart from that, apart from fulfilling that constraint, we just solve the the Poisson problem. So it's a minimal energy extension of those vertex values. Uh, so that's how we got the, uh, that, that picture. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so that's how, how the picture got updated. Okay, so this was it from my side. Any questions?